Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I apologize in advance for any kind of disturbance in the in the voice. Allahumma ja'al hadha al-jam'a jam'an marhuma wa ja'al al-tafarruqa ba'dahu tafarruqan ma'asuma wa la tada' fina shaqiyya wa la mahuma in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all the praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the great things that they are compulsory upon every single person of us is to be a dedicated Muslim and to follow Islam and to be proud of Islam and to be a da'iyah, a preacher, a caller for Islam. I think we agree on that, which is something very basic. Knowledge about Islam for any Muslim should be aware of. Definitely, I'm not here to talk about this. It's just a simple introduction. I'm here to say, how can I be on the top in fulfilling this simple duty? One, one of the great things that you need always to be very powerful and sure that you are standing on a firm ground that your religion is not a truth, it is the truth. The truth. Definitely. <laughs> if you don't have this certainty, you will not have the power. Anything, at any time, could shake your ground. Time. What is my role now? My role, I want to show you one of the ways that gives you this power. الإخوة في الخلف الله يكرمكم في مجال الصوت شوي لو سمحتم brothers in the back can you just a little bit جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم thank you what I was saying I will show you one of the ways to آه جزاك الله خير one of the ways to give you this amazing power of certainty on the truth one of the ways one of the channels to look at those who used to be someday an outsider, a rejecter, an attacker, and might an enemy of Islam, when he decides after doing all of his efforts to destroy your religion, he himself becomes a Muslim. <laughs> Listen to him. See what did attract him. Because maybe, because you and me, the majority, we were born Muslims. The one who was born a Muslim, yes, he's gifted by Allah. However, one of the things that he, she might be missing, very big, strong glories and strong elements of the religion because it's granted for him. This is one of the possible disadvantages. If we talk it just for granted, <laughs> I'm a Muslim and that's it. We might lose this power. The external does not have this kind of luxury. He's an external, he's attacking. He's looking for any kind of leaking point just to destroy. When he decides to become a follower, a humble Muslim, you can show that, okay. Give me a logical, logical analysis for that. Except that what you have is the truth. This is the introduction. What is the example? One of tens of examples. I'll do my best to keep feeding, inshallah, this blessed time with Gary Miller. Anything I tell you, go and check it on Mr. Google, okay? And enjoy increasing your mind with extra knowledge because we have limitation of time. Gary Miller, 1977, he was a professor at one of the Toronto universities here in Canada, just a few kilometers from here. 1977, he was a professor of mathematics. Plus, he has another job in parallel, which is he was a missionary preacher of Christianity. Because he was a very good, nice, good thinker, human mathematician, by default, a person of logic. By default. If not, there is something wrong. <laughs> so he decided, he was asked, someone asked him to do as a missionary, as a dedicated Christian missionary, to do a job, which is to prove the mistakes of the Qur'an through two ways. One of them, to find mistakes in the scientific approach of the Qur'an or knowledge. The other one, 
to find mistakes in the historical events that Quran is talking about. So he did a very deep research and he ended up zero as a result. Is, the result was zero, nothing. So no one from the surrounding of him liked his findings. He was a very honest person. He could not find any contradiction with science. For your information, just pause outside of the story. Quran is 114 chapters, 6,347 verses, around 93,000 words. It contains 1,000 verses, talks about what we call now, in our nowadays wording, we call it scientific, okay, or applied science. It contains. He was not able to find one contradiction. And he had an amazing debate with Ahmed Didat, rahimahullah, here in Toronto, 1977. You can see it on YouTube. Go and write, Gali, Gary Miller, debate, Ahmed Didat, Toronto. You will, you will listen. Mind-blowing. To the best of my memory, at that time, still, he was not a Muslim. In 1978, he became a Muslim. I don't know if he's still alive now. If he's, still, if he's alive, he's at least 80 plus, approaching 90, if he's still alive. His he changed his name to Abdul Ahad Omar. <laughs> but why I mentioned all of this introduction, we can, I can make 10 episodes about him. One of the things that stopped him is the following. He said, one of the things that stopped me and kept me reviewing, he was reading to his people who were attacking Muhammad Sallallahu and Islam. He said, all of them, they are adapting one of two narratives about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is either a liar or a crazy, all the time, liar, crazy, crazy, liar, liar, crazy, liar, crazy. Do you condemn, do you condemn, do you condemn, do you condemn, do you condemn? Become a fact. Exactly. Now, he's a person of logic. He said, look, it's impossible for a person to be Crazy and a liar. It's impossible. <laughs> How come you can say crazy and a liar? A liar, by the way, a liar is a very clever person. <laughs> he chooses what to say, when to say it, how to say it, how to plan it, and how to cover it. And whom, how to make another liar to cover the first lie. A crazy should be making nonsense. How come at 23 years of revelation, no contradiction, full harmony, 1,000 verse about scientific facts, no one knew it on earth. Crazy? It's impossible. <laughs> Tayyip, liar. What astonished him and made him a Muslim, one of the greatest things is the following incident, which I made all of this to mention it, which is, in the eighth year, of Hijrah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granted him and gave him a son from Mary al Qubtiya. The ruler of Egypt, Alexandria at that time, Al Muqawqas, sent a gift, it was a norm in the world at that time, sent a gift to Prophet Muhammad, Mary al Qubtiya. So he married her, and Allah gave him from her a son, and he called him Ibrahim. He lived around, according to the narration, between 16 to 18 months, one year and a half. Then he passed away. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he had his tears, and we know, in the Aina in the Qalb How now, one of the amazing things happened, we say in our normal language, we say coincidentally. It's not coincidentally, by the will of Allah, in that specific day, when Ibrahim passed away, the Sun eclipsed. So the people thought that this is a great sign from Allah for the greatness of the son of the Prophet Muhammad. And if Muhammad, okay, so immediately when this possible thoughts started to be leaking to the mind or the selves or the hearts of some people, immediately Prophet Muhammad said literally, قال إن الشمس والقمر لا يخسفان لموت أحد ولا لحياته. He said, hey, look, be careful. He was fixing their possible misconceptions because it was like a norm, you know. 
any great big liars of the history, they used to use this kind of natural things to support their big lies. He said, Prophet Muhammad immediately, he said, the sun and the moon will not and they do not eclipse for the birth or the death of any person. They are just signs of greatness and glory and power of Allah. Whenever you see one of them, just flee to the prayer. Ask Allah to protect you from his anger. You know why? Because we have in the Quran, Allah, Allah does use these great signs like the eclipse, signs of threatening for us. Know your place, human, be careful at any moment. If Allah commanded the sun not to come again, what will happen with us? No energy, no power, no light, no agriculture, no plantation, no evaporation, no rain. If Allah commanded the oil not to be pushed by the pressure of his creation, no fuel, no power. If Allah commanded the water inside the earth not to be pushed out, billions of us will die. Just like this. Just like this. So Prophet Muhammad said, be careful. Just go and ask Allah for his forgiveness. Now, Gary Miller, when he read this, it was a mind blowing for him. He said, <laughs> how on earth a person will not make benefit of this golden opportunity which was given to him on a golden plate. <laughs> if Muhammad, God forbid, just imagine if a liar or a normal person wanted to make benefit of this incident. His son passed away. And just one minute, finish. Inshallah. <laughs> He's the Imam. <clears throat> if his son passed away, can you imagine what he could have done in terms of making benefit of this sign to support his lie? The people will prostrate for him. Oh, and some hypocrites, you know, might come and say, like some of our Arab rulers, they have a lot of, you know, hypocrites around him. See the Zaim, see the, all of these people. He say, oh, 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 Lord, you see, the sun feels, oh, 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 he, oh, 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 or even a crazy, how come he did not make benefit of this? How immediately he stood up and fixed and said, don't ever think. This pushed him mind blowing. And this gives you an idea that anyone who is seeking the truth, Allah will guide him. But when someone in advance is rejecting the truth, has already decided to follow his desire or the shaitan, Allah will not guide him. Allah will do idlal. Allah will misguide him. Because he has taken the decision that I don't want. Gary Miller is one of the examples. He was seeking the truth. And this is a simple example of what made the mind of Gary Miller be blown by the truth. This is one of the channels how we can keep strengthening our iman in our religion. I'm telling you this, especially for your kids. And for the youth, read about those people. And I will keep talking about them, inshallah, in Ramadan and other examples. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.